As you heard James Packard say just moments ago, this powerful storm system already a travel nightmare. Cheryl Nelson has forecast and covered thousands of weather events for two decades. Cheryl, thanks for being with us. She's down in Norfolk, Virginia. Can you break down what's going on and why we are seeing this latest severe weather outbreak? Yeah, hi Dell. Thanks for having me. And this is something that's not completely unusual. We are in the summer months. This is typically when we have a lot of humidity, right? We have a lot of the ingredients that form these types of storm systems. But it's been so warm lately across much of the country. In fact, July was the warmest for the world on record. So we have a lot of heat and the warmer the air is, the more moisture the air can hold. Water temperatures are record high levels across parts of the Gulf, the Atlantic Ocean. So we have all of this moisture to work with and we have ingredients like lift. We have the instability. We have wind shear that comes with low pressure systems and fronts associated with that. So you mix all those together into a big pot and you get a big old storm system capable of producing severe thunderstorms and even tornadoes. Cheryl, people where you are, they love their trees. People where we just heard Jack uh, Ward up in Baltimore, they love their trees. People in Northern Virginia love their trees. Guess what happens when we get these huge rainstorms with these wind gusts of up to 80 miles an hour, those trees come mm -hmm. down. Is this a case of, of, I guess, Mother Nature playing a cruel joke on the entire metro area where you live? Yeah, it is. It's scary, right? Because we love these trees. They help give us shade. They actually help cool temperatures. And the trees are wonderful, but if they're hanging over your house, if you have the branches or even dead trees, what you want to do is you have to get somebody out there to help you get rid of those. Because yes, the weaker the tree, if the tree is dead, it's not going to take much to fall on your home, for example. Also, if you've had a lot of rain and your ground is saturated, it's not going to take a lot of wind to blow that tree over because it's so weak at the ground from all that moisture. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. So as much as we love trees, we have to make sure we pay the money to have them taken care of. Cheryl, the biggest threat with these storms are the straight line winds that we're seeing now. There was that derecho back in 1991 with winds clocked at 91 miles an hour. Last week, Washington, D.C. saw top winds of 84 miles an hour. We're really getting close to tornado strength, but over a large swath. How is this happening? Yeah, that's what's scary about these storms. You have the ingredients coming in. You have low level jet pumping in extra moisture and extra winds. And this can go for hundreds of miles at a time. And the ratio is basically a strong line of thunderstorm that kind of bows out as it drops down to the south and east. And with that, it has enough intensity to have those straight line winds that can really do damage for hundreds of miles. So derecios are something that you don't want to hear. When you hear them, you know that that storm means business and can affect a lot of people and knock out a lot of power. Cheryl, as you know, nationwide insurance companies are really recalculating how they want to cover our homes. Um, we have basically Florida and California saying we're not going to insure homes in those two states because of hurricanes. We're seeing tornadoes in places that we did not see them before flooding in places that we did not see before. Based on what you're seeing with climate change and these changing weather patterns, is it time for all of us to take a look at our homeowners insurance policies? Yes, absolutely, 100%. So many people don't realize that your homeowner's policy does not cover flooding. So flood insurance is separate. And some people think, oh, I don't need flood insurance. I'm not in a designated FEMA flood zone. Well, guess what? Think back to Hurricane Harvey. When you get 50 or 60 inches of rain from one storm just over the period of a couple of days, if you get that much water at your house in that short of a period of time, then yes, just about anywhere can flood. So I think everybody should look at their policies, consider flood insurance, reach out to your insurance provider and say, hey, how do I investigate getting flood insurance? It's something that I might want to do, but keep in mind there is a 30 day wait period for flood insurance to take effect. So even if you get it today, it's not going to take effect till 30 days from now. Cheryl, a game my wife and I play, which is where do we want to retire? And when we play that, we say, <laughs> you're that. laughing because you know exactly what I'm getting ready to ask. Is there a place now in this country that is not a threat for some type of severe weather? It used to be where you are. If you went to the north, you were shielded because of the Shenandoah Mountains protecting the East Coast. And then you had hurricanes coming up the Chesapeake Bay. Then they spawned tornadoes. You know, I hate to say it, but are we starting to build an arc and saying it's time to bring in the animals? 
<laughs> it's time to go in that bubble, you know, your own little safe bubble. That's where I would tell you to retire. But unfortunately, you can't do that. So as far as a state in the country, every state is prone to disasters, whether it be hurricanes, tornadoes, thunderstorms in the southeast, wildfires, earthquakes out west. You go up north, there could be flooding. You could get, get, really get any kind of weather anywhere now in this country and with climate change we have warming temperatures as you mentioned tornado alley is shifting a bit farther to the east so places like the tennessee valley they're now starting to see more tornadoes as well and so when people ask me what state is the safest i cannot give them an answer because you could have that one in 100 year storm as soon as you move to that state cheryl finally before i let you go you're also a natural disaster preparedness expert so what should people do to stay safe during severe weather outbreaks like we're seeing? I love that question. First of all is know your risk. Know what types of hazards that you're prone to. If you are traveling on vacation, know your risk there as well. A lot of us have our blinders on when we're on vacation, so we have to keep that in mind. A disaster preparedness kit. Have one in your home and also in your vehicle for enough supplies for about three days and have supplies for everybody in your family. All of the basics are on my website, preparewithshare.com. And know your evacuation routes. Know what to do. Know where you would go you just have to make a plan and make sure everybody in your family is on the same page knows and understands that plan did not think about what to do about where you're headed on vacation cheryl nelson thanks for the tips you're welcome thank you so much for having me